Mountains. Let us first summarize the features of equilibrium constants that we have seen so far. The equilibrium constant comes into the picture only when the concentrations of the reactants and products have attained their equilibrium state. The value of the equilibrium constant is independent of the initial concentrations of the reactants and products. The equilibrium constant is dependent on the temperature. At a given temperature, the equilibrium constant has a unique value for a reaction represented by a balanced equation. The equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction is equal to the inverse of the equilibrium constant for the forward reaction. If from a balanced chemical reaction, other equations are obtained by multiplying or dividing the equation by a small integer, the equilibrium constant of the original equation and the derived equation will be related in the same way as shown. Now, let us see what the applications of equilibrium constant are. Consider a general reaction. AA plus BB reversibly giving CC plus DD. The equilibrium constant will be given by Kc equals concentration of C raised to C into concentration of D raised to D divided by concentration of A raised to A into concentration of B raised to B. Now, the numerical value of the equilibrium constant indicates only the extent of the reaction, but gives no information about the rate at which the equilibrium will be reached. As you can see from the expression, the magnitude of the equilibrium constant is directly proportional to the concentration of the products and inversely proportional to the concentration of the reactants. From this, we can infer that a higher value of K would indicate a higher concentration of products and vice versa. For reactions with Kc greater than 10 raised to 3, the products will dominate over the reactants. That is, the reaction reaches very near to completion. Let us see some examples. H2 plus half O2 giving H2O at 500 Kelvin has a very large equilibrium constant. Kc equals 2.4 into 10 raised to 47. H2 plus Cl2 giving 2HCl at 300 Kelvin has Kc equals 4.0 into 10 raised to 31. H2 plus Br2 giving 2HBr at 300 Kelvin Kc equals 5.4 into 10 raised to 18. For some reactions, the Kc less than 10 raised to minus 3. In such cases, the reactants dominate over the products. If the Kc is very small, the reaction rarely proceeds. H2O giving H2 plus half O2 has a very small equilibrium constant. Kc equals 4.1 into 10 raised to minus 48. N2 plus O2 giving 2NO at 298 Kelvin has Kc equals 4.8 into 10 raised to minus 31. For some reactions, Kc is in the range of 10 raised to minus 3 to 10 raised to 3. In such reactions, appreciable quantities of both reactants and products are present. For reaction of H2 with I2 to give HI, Kc equals 57.0 at 700 Kelvin. The gas decomposition of N2O4 to NO2 has an equilibrium constant with value 4.64 into 10 raised to minus 3 at 25 degrees C. It is neither too small nor too large. So the equilibrium mixture for this reaction contains an appreciable mix of both N2O4 and NO2. These generalizations regarding the value of Kc can be represented as shown. In the direction of the reaction. Let us see how the equilibrium constant can be used to predict the direction of the reaction. Consider a general reaction. AA plus BB reversibly giving CC plus DD. We define a reaction quotient Q. QC with molar concentrations and QP with partial pressures in the same way as the equilibrium constant. However, the concentrations for QC may or may not be equilibrium concentrations. Qc equals concentration of C raised to C into concentration of D raised to D divided by concentration of A raised to A into concentration of B raised to B. 
Now, if QC greater than KC, the reaction will proceed in the reverse direction, that is, in the direction of reactants. If QC less than KC, the reaction will proceed in the forward direction, that is, in the direction of the products. If QC equals KC, the reaction mixture is already at equilibrium. Let us take an example of the gaseous reaction of N2 plus O2 reversibly giving 2NO. The equilibrium constant KC is 1.0 into 10 raised to minus 5 at 1500 Kelvin. Suppose the molar concentrations are N2 equals 0.05 M, O2 equals 0.02 M, NO equals 0.30 M. So the reaction quotient will be given by QC equals concentration of NO square by concentration of N2 into concentration of O2 equals 0 0.30 square by 0 0.05 into 0 0.02 which is equal to 90. So QC is much greater than KC. So it is not an equilibrium and the reverse direction is preferred. The reaction will proceed in the reverse direction till QC becomes equal to KC and equilibrium is attained. From our discussion we can generalize that if QC less than KC, net reaction goes from left to right as shown in the diagram. If QC greater than KC, net reaction goes from right to left. If QC equals KC, no net reaction occurs. Calculating equilibrium concentrations. Let us see how we can calculate the equilibrium concentration with the help of an example of the reaction of 1 mole of CO gas plus 1 mole of H2O gas reversibly give 1 mole of CO2 gas and 1 mole of H2 gas. KC of the reaction is 4.24 at 800 Kelvin. Step 1. Write the balanced equation as shown. Step 2. Make a table under the balanced equation which lists the initial concentration, the change in concentration or going to equilibrium and the equilibrium concentration. In the table, X is the concentration, mole per litre, of one of the substances that reacts on going to equilibrium. We use the stoichiometry of the reaction to find out the concentration of the other substances involved in terms of X. Step 3. We substitute the equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium equation for the reaction and find X. If it results in a quadratic equation, we choose the solution that makes chemical Kc equals concentration of CO2 into concentration of H2 divided by the product of the concentration of CO and the concentration of H2O. Hence, 4.24 equals x into x divided by 0 0.1 minus x into 0 0.1 minus x. This equals x squared by 0 0.1 minus x, the whole square. Taking square root on both the sides, 2.06 equals x by 0 0.1 minus x. Therefore, 0 0.206 minus 2.06x equals x. This means 3.06x equals 0 0.206. Hence, x equals 0 0.067. Step 4. We calculate the equilibrium concentrations from the calculated value of x. Therefore, concentration of CO2 at equilibrium equals concentration of H2 at equilibrium, which equals 0 0.067 M. Step 5. We check our results by substituting them into the equilibrium equation. Hence, the concentration of CO equals the concentration of H2O equals 0 0.1 minus 0 0.067, which equals 0 0.033 M.